Wanted to watch a guy drink sparkling water out of a mini fridge. You made it to the right place. Today we're gonna do some science, and by science I mean wiring and testing fuel pumps. So I have one fuel pump hooked up. What I wanna do is I wanna test the current draw on a single Walbro 450 because I have three of them and I want to properly size the wiring. So I have a big relay, a couple big relays that I've had in the shelf for a while. I have these 120 amp big boy relays. I have two of them that I've been sitting on for like a year, never used. The relay is really excessive because for the additional two pumps, I only need about 30 amps of draw. And I know that because I, I measured it on the Ranger and I'll show you how to measure that. With the two pumps on the Ranger, I measured about 32, 33 amps and I'm running a single 40 amp relay in there. I feel like there's usually a lot of guessing happening when people are sizing stuff. So they see a rating or they go on a forum and they read what other people are doing and sometimes that's not always accurate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a test at 80 PSI and I'll run a test at uh, 60 PSI and we'll look at the current draw from each setting. So I have my clamp meter hooked up to one of the leads that's going to the single pump that's hooked up. Flip my key forward, I have the terminator set up on a 60 second prime and you can see it's pulling about 14 amps. So 13, 14 it is set on DC amps. It's pulling 13.8 and that is on 80 PSI right now. So now what I'll do is I'll turn the regulator down to 60 PSI and then we'll look at the draw again. So now we're right at about 60. And the current draw is at 12.1, 12 .1, amps. So this is with the vehicle not running. So as a resting voltage of probably about 11 and a half to 12 volts with the pumps running and the lights on. So it was 13.8 amps at 80 PSI and 12 amps at 60 PSI. So now what I'm gonna do is do, it with, do the same test with the vehicle running because that's gonna be about 14 amps consistently. So it'll increase the voltage so it will change the current draw. So I'll do the same test. I'm not gonna talk. Do it at 80 PSI. Look at the current draw and write it down and I'll put it on 60 PSI. Check it again and we'll write it down and talk about it. Alright, so interesting result there. Remember when I said I tested it on the Ranger and two pumps were pulling about 32 amps when I measured it? Basically 16 amps, that would be 32 amps with two pumps and there's 14 and a half so that's about 30. So I think I said 30 to 32 before which is right in that range. So now the circuit that I need to build should be good for high end about 35 amps. I'm gonna build it for probably 40 but just wanted to show you guys how I was figuring that out what the wall bros actually run at because I've heard some some other things I've never actually measured one that runs up to like 35 amps or whatever they're rated at or whatever people are talking about so I'll go get some stuff and then we'll start wiring. Alright so came over to the storage unit and I know I got baskets of wire in here so that's kind of why I wanted to come get some wire. I'm gonna get I got a whole roll here of 8 gauge wire 500 feet some old, oh, landed on my foot some old uh, car harness more 8 gauge got a bunch of 0 gauge down here big stuff but I'm going to take some of this red 8 gauge and I have, a, I have some of the black 8 gauge at my house already so that's what I'm going to use okay so this is the wire that I'm going to be using OFC copper it's good wire uh, this is actually wire that I ordered, I, it was kind of like a brand that I started, it was, the, the label was STC, so Subject to Change was the name of the business, Subject to Change Designs. So that's what all the wire was, a lot of the wire that was in the bin, like all the white stuff and the black and the red, and there was some blue zero gauge and stuff, that was all kind of like my design at the time. And I can't really say it was a failed business adventure because it was successful, and I just sold out of the stuff really fast. I sold out of it faster than uh, I was able to keep up with financially. So 
just kind of stopped doing that and it's kind of hard to keep up with uh, the big boys that are able to buy you know seven containers at a time and ship it over from China so this is some stock that I had left over I saved this stuff I didn't want to sell it because it did, did have some defects on it so this was like B stock wire that I had so that's kind of what a lot of this stuff is so I'll probably tape or heat shrink over that just it's it's still sealed it's just a defect so that's what I'm gonna use and we'll throw it in okay so I took the fuse box cover back out and then I'm gonna mount the relay right there so I did heat shrink this 8 gauge line and then I just put a little jumper over here for the power it's got the two little got the two little spade terminals on the bottom so I just ran power over to here ground is gonna come from the ECU and then it'll pass the power down to the fuel pumps so that should tuck in there just like that and then I should be able to fit this thing right over without any issues okay so got the cover back on in its normal spot and you can see the relay down in there and it doesn't doesn't hit or anything so that should be pretty good and then the other line will just come down under and then I'm gonna follow one of the factory harnesses down there comes down this way against the frame and then I'll go in by the tank towards the back all right so got the wiring kind of finished up back here so I ended up putting a male and a female spade on here I did a male on the positive and then a female on the negative and then the opposite on this side so there's no way that I can reverse polarity if I hook it up backwards for whatever reason so I'm gonna plug these in and then I'm gonna tape them I don't actually I was gonna heat shrink them but I can smell fumes <laughs> like in the area from the gas tank and I don't have a heat gun all I have is a lighter so I'm not gonna use an open flame on a gas tank might be a good idea so yeah I'm gonna plug these in get the tank back up and then I'm gonna take the lines and I'm gonna zip tie the lines as best I can and kind of get them out of the way so fuel system is done you have the line coming down there you can see the relay in there I did wire it up to the terminator I did actually bury my input output harness inside here too so I used the gray yellow wire output one to trigger the relay as a ground trigger to trigger the relay and I, I didn't snip the zip ties yet but you can see the line coming down I zip tied it to the brake line there <clears throat> and then just ran it along this factory loom right here and then goes up and over the top all right so now I just got to get it up off the jack stands and then I'll back it out I'm actually gonna take it to the gas station right away and try to throw like 10 gallons in it and see how it fills okay moment of truth E85 Starting to pump. With the Bank of America Cash Rewards credit card, you can earn 3% tax back on online shopping, making your purchase even more important. Just keep her rolling, uncut. from Chatter. Twitter is reintroducing their verification process for users who have been looking for a way to get that small blue check mark on their profile. Keep the blue check, a user must it's take 40 minutes. On the account, as well as work in prominent fields like government, politics, entertainment, sports, news, or other industries. All right, so everything seems to be working pretty good. I did hear a noise while I was driving, so I stopped, and then a uh, good thing I did because 
one of the harness lines actually shifted and it was touching the front drive shaft. So I don't know if that's the noise that I was hearing, but it definitely was hitting and it just started doing it. Um, so maybe that was the noise. I also didn't realize how noisy a fuel pressure regulator is. Now that I have it mounted to the firewall, at least I think that's what the noise is. It's like a humming noise and you can hear it right in this section. So I'm guessing it's that because it's hard mounted to the firewall. So maybe I'll get like a rubber grommet or something on there and see if it can quiet it down. But it's actually kind of noisy, like a buzzing, humming sound. What else we got? Uh, the fuel system filled fine. Uh, you saw it on the you saw it on the video. I'll leave it unedited. It's kind of choppy, but I'll leave it there. I did pump uh, eleven gallons, so twenty dollars, eleven gallons, and it took the whole thing fine. I just put the nozzle in and let it run. I only put eleven in because I have to put the other twelve that I have right there in the tank. But yeah, that's uh, that's just the five sixteenths line coming out vented, and then the three eighths line that I showed in the last video. So I might try to cap that other 5 sixteenths line because right now it's just open so I might try to cap it and then if it's still fence fine it should be good but it didn't hiccup at all so I'm guessing it should be fine so that's all I have to say guys thanks for watching have a good one